You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. Welcome back to my live shows. We were off for about four weeks doing replays, and I'm so excited to be home, um, back from Europe and Africa for the Endemic Project documentary any of you who have been following my journey, um, this has been two and a half years in the making, I guess longer than that now. Um, and we are finally wrapping the third uh, installation of the docu trilogy. And it's really, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride. I can't wait to catch you guys up. I have a full house today, lots of guests. And um, it's really, uh, it's been a great time. I missed you guys. I missed being live. I found out what works best for me is to not, be streaming shows while I'm traveling. Um, that was a lot to manage and um, Wi-Fi and, you know, just logistics of that. So it's better to do the replays. So thank you for being patient for new shows. Happy holidays. I left right after uh, Halloween and it's now Christmas time. So I hope everyone's well. Um, some updates. Uh, we have submitted the first film to a couple film festivals, notable ones, Sundance, Tribeca, we're waiting to hear back on how that goes. Um, we have a private screening, uh, January 21st, which happens to be my birthday in Park City, Utah, around Sundance Week up there. So we'll be putting tickets live soon if you wanna join us there. Um, and I'm sure we'll be doing some, um, some updates on the air. Shout out to Sam, thank you for holding things down for me while I was gone and, and doing the replays. And um, Without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce you guys to Kelly um, from Karakit. Hi, Kelly. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. Glad you're back. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm back in one piece, Kelly. <laughs> and good. It's good to see you smiling and happy and um, missed your face. <laughs> and, uh, you know, seeing a lot of your brand really take off on social media, I've seen that you've done some additional efforts and I've been tracking you. Why don't we catch everybody up on Karakit, your journey, who you are, and uh, go ahead and tell them. Sure. I'm, uh, I'm Kelly Witten. Uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, really right when the pandemic started. So of April of 2020, uh, at the time, my kids were two and five years old. So it was uh, it was. A struggle to say the least to get through you know chemo radiation three surgeries uh all while you know being a mom and and trying to you know stay away from covid so it was it was quite a quite a challenge wow. so yeah and, and in the process of doing that though um you know people started asking me how can i help and what can i do we couldn't do the same things i would say in a non-pandemic time like people couldn't come with me to the chemo sessions and we couldn't, you know, hang out on the days that I was feeling well. Uh, but even without that, I had no idea what anyone can do. I hadn't been through it. Uh, I had really no, no concept. So I was starting to get, you know, beautiful gifts from people who were just like, well, I want to do something. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, it would be flowers or food baskets or, you know, really wonderful things that warmed my heart, you know, in, in an amazing way, just from friends and family that were able to do that. Uh, but at the same moment, I would be going to the doctor's offices and talking to the nurses and talking to other patients. And they would say, oh, you really need to get this. And this is what has really worked for me. This is for the all the at-home side effects, not anything that, you know, your doctors are in charge. They need to do the stuff to beat the cancer and anything else, uh, you know, in, in the medical uh, portion of, of this. But, you know, the, the at-home stuff is pretty critical. I mean, you lose pretty much all of the moisture in your body, you know, the, the chemo goes after all of the fastest moving cells. So that's your hair, you know, so your skin, you know, you get really dry, it sucks moisture out. So, you know, it would be anything from like, you know, vitamin E oil on your nails, because they're going to start chipping and certain toothpastes and toothbrushes and how to how to stay hydrated when water tastes like metal, which is what it did for me, you know, and food tastes terrible as well. Um, so in that process, and of talking to a lot of women, um, I, I'm in business, uh, and that was my career and background. And, you know, I just said, why isn't anyone doing this? Why isn't anyone listening to all of the women who have done this and actually putting together a list of all of those at home products that, that someone could just get a package of, they wouldn't have to think about it or worry about it. Um, their friends and family could come together and all, you know, chip in to do something. Um, 
And then what we've done is sort of step that up another level to do an instruction card that goes in each of the kits. And that's from the point of view of women who have been there before. So, you know, little paragraphs to say, hey, listen, you know, what a great story that we have is from some women that I learned a lot from along the way. But they were like, you have to put a lint roller. And I was like, well, a lint roller? I don't get it. Like when you start shedding or... And they said, no, no, it's because whenever you shave your head, when you lose your hair, you have to go through that shave. And they would use the lint roller and it would take all those pokey hairs that could even be painful when you would lay down, take them all out. And it's not something that you would know otherwise. It's just take someone having been through it and mm -hmm. learning and, you know, telling their story. So we've collected the stories from a lot of women. You know, we've done interviews, we've done electronic surveys uh, to try and get the, the list of the most effective at home products that someone going through treatment needs. And we have kits for chemo, radiation, and surgery. We're working on our men's kit, which will launch in January. We're also working on a caregiver's kit because uh, the truth is somebody who is, is taking care of someone going through this journey, it's difficult. There's no question. So, and I think it's important, you know, I would have given these uh, at the time, you know, my neighbor was you know, the, you know, angel from heaven. She just was there every day, everything that I needed. Yes. Um, I would have loved to have sent her something. I mean, I definitely did. And, and, you know, in my own way, but like something that comes from, comes from the heart and comes from the perspective of people going through this journey and process. So that's, that's what we try and do. Take that information, take that research and put it into the product. Yeah. And, you know, I think inside of a pandemic, you were fighting a personal pandemic, you know, so you weren't just doing the thing that we all were relating to in that time. You had this other layer. And in that moment, you were being the change you wanted to see in the world. You know, that's yeah. one of my favorite quotes. I think Gandhi, you know, mm -hmm. has out there. And I find that really, really inspirational. And that's what the startup's about. You really literally did the top three stressful things three things in the world, right? You're fighting cancer, you're taking right. care of your family, and then you're launching a brand. I mean, yes. I just, I don't understand like how you did it. What what tips could you give people who are just dealing with starting up a business without the out uh, of the things? You know, it, it's funny. I, I'm a generally an optimist, to be honest. I, you know, I always think that, that you are the energy, right? That you put out into the world, you know, yes. similar to, to you, I know that, it, you know, when you're focusing on how you can do good, even though everyone wanted to help me, to be honest, I wanted to help other people. I suddenly understood what it was like for all of those other women that I had. I mean, I'd known other people. I sent flowers before, right? I, I had no idea what, what this journey was like. Um, and, and I, you know, whenever I get that information, uh, all, all I can do is, is act on what, what, you know, has been given to me at the time and, and use whatever skills that I have and bring to the situation to try and make it better for other people. I really am driven by that. I'm not necessarily religious, uh, but, but I really am, you know, the, the idea that if you're putting good out into the world, uh, that's, that's just about the best that you can do and, and the most important thing that you can do. And, you know, running a startup is not easy by any stretch, right? You have to have resources and funds, um, you have to have a vision. You have to be able to research and understand that marketplace. I have a team of people now, you know, one you know that does digital advertising. We, we have a 501c3 arm now that's called Care Kit Cares. We want to give these kits to women in need, in addition to being a resource for folks who just want to purchase these for, for people in their lives. Um, so, you know, to me, it's, it's bringing all of the pieces together, understanding <clears throat> really what those priorities are for you, you know, being able to balance them as well in your own life, yeah. um, but really every day focusing in on, uh, you know, what can I do now to fulfill this goal and maybe not getting as bogged down with, with the little things or with the emotional things and just saying like, all right, this is my purpose. This is my passion. What am I doing about it today? What, what things, what decisions am I making to further that? Mm, that's a really good tip. And I think kind of navigating, you know, your niche in the market, identifying the market, the need there, you did yep. that from, you know, I think they say the best business ideas, startup ideas come from a niche, a need in the niche. And uh, you fulfilled that going through the journey. So firsthand, you're trying this and you can speak to the products. And I wonder if your startup was similar to some of mine, especially with the, these films, because I sure didn't know how I was going to do it, did not see the whole path. But 
just kept stepping forward in faith, knowing that there's a reason why I'm doing it and I feel inspired to do it. Did you draw your partners to you in that way? How did some of your partners that are in the kit, and I know that you have some of the items, if you could hold them up, whatever you have, show maybe the box or do you have anything? Yeah, I don't have it with me, but I can even, I can point to some of the stuff that's right yeah. here. In the um, yeah. So, you know, it's funny, where it is? This yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> those, those, are, those pins when we're in class. Yeah, a little laser. <laughs> a laser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are hydration drops. Okay. Um, you know, I didn't know about these before going through this process. I'm sure if you are a, um, an athlete, you understand this a little bit more. You know, obviously when you are, uh, you know, going through this, but, you know, being dehydrated for anyone is, is potentially a concern. You know, we really need hydration in our body, body to live. Uh, you know, you should drink, what is it? Eight, eight cups of water, probably more 64 ounces a day um, okay. to make sure that you, yeah, get on it, get the water okay. bottle. Turn right. it. <laughs> Here you go. Shout out to skin view. All right. I got yeah. my water. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really important. It's it's like the number one thing for, for how to keep doing it. But again, whenever you're going through, especially chemo, you just do not feel like drinking. So if you're adding, you add a few drops of this to your water, for me, at least water tasted terrible. So I was like, well, if I'm going to drink it, you know, and this is really doesn't have any taste to it, but I was like, I don't really care. I'm I, as long as I'm packing a punch in the hydration that I'm that I'm taking in the water that I'm drinking, uh, then then that was okay. Um, but again, even if you're a, you're an athlete or you're not great at drinking water, or whatever, whatever those things are, this just adds extra hydration into the regular cups of water that you're drinking, and that is really really important to do. So we have that in our in our chemo kits. Um, you know, it's funny. A lot of the the products in the the chemo care packages are focused on hydration. We do um, this cream called Mother of All Creams that I absolutely love. I um, tried that cream. Wow. You know, it's amazing. You put it's it on amazing. your end of a, of a day, like in the summer when you're wearing sandals all over and it's like, yes. whoa, you wake up and it's great. Um, I found this during, uh, during treatment, but everything starts to crack and they actually, uh, you know, we have socks in the kits as well. They, yeah. they warn you about your feet, especially because there's a lot of bacteria, obviously on the ground. If you get cracks in your heels or feet, uh, it's a, it's a great place for the bacteria to come in because chemo is really attacking those white blood cells. You don't have enough of that sort of army to come back and fight those infections, which is why you're so vulnerable going through chemo. So we have this cream that will really, you know, smooth out the rough parts. And then you put the socks on, you know, you really should not be walking around barefoot um, while you're in treatment in, in chemo uh, because you just don't know what's going to sort of get in there and can cause you problems ultimately. So those are a couple of other things that are in there. We have lip balm. We do a um, vitamin E oil. Um, part of the reason why there's such specific products as well is because you really cannot have products with chemicals, dyes, fragrances, parabens, sulfates. You know, the doctors will tell you all of these things. I didn't understand that. And I was like, oh my God, I have to redo my medicine cabinet. I have to go back and chuck everything that I was using, all of the body washes and the soaps and all the lovely stuff and just put it in a box and then bring it back out afterwards. And uh, so this is one of those, you know, natural products you can put there, you can put on rough patches, you can use on your face, you can use anywhere on your body, really, but you, that you know that it is safe and, and okay to use. Um, and again, the, your doctors are going to be the best, you know, we, we do this from our perspective, as people who have been through this, and it's not just me, it's a lot of the women that work uh, with Karakin. Uh, but always check with the doctor. I mean, I love my doctors. I think they're they're amazing human beings. They had an army. Of oh my gosh! Now, you really do. Yeah. We're well, getting around Christmas time, so you guys check out Kara Kit for that your loved one, your friend, anyone that needs this. This this is a big kit of love. It's inspirational, and I was able to regift to a couple of ladies that are on the on the better side of this. And um, thanks to you, and give everybody your handle. We have to run, but we want to have you back. Give a where can we order? Yeah, go to www.karakit.com. Uh, we're on Instagram and Facebook at Kara Kits with an S. Uh, and then the charity arm is Kara Kit Cares, uh, which we are, to be honest, are just uh, gearing up for. Uh, but we're really focused on next year to make sure we give away a lot of kits, to be totally honest. But we want to allow other people to add into that kitty to be able to help service the women that reach out to us. Because having a little luxury 
uh, really essential support from products that you need uh, and just, you know, joy and love. That's what we're trying to, to share with these kids. So uh, this is season check. and you're yes. going to see Kara Kit around some of the events we're doing coming up. Thank you for taking time on this Sunday, Kelly. And I will see you very soon again. See you soon. Thanks so much. All right, dear. Good to see you. You too. All right, you guys, that was Kelly with Kara Kit. I have a special guest today with Amex. He's got a giveaway. He's going to tell you more about it. Brett, are you here? I'm here. Thanks so much for having me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for taking time. My pleasure. So why don't you introduce yourself? Tell everyone about yourself and what you're doing with Amex. We can't wait to hear. Sure. So my name is Brett Sussman. I lead sales and marketing at Cabbage from American Express. For those of you not familiar with Cabbage, Cabbage is an all digital cash flow management solution that American Express bought about two years ago. And it really is intended to give you some of that visibility, particularly now during the holiday season when small business owners need it most. Wonderful. We need visibility and we need to be able to move funds around. Can you get a little more specific for, say, those startups that are, you know, in the incubation period about to launch and maybe they want to, to join? Yeah. So, you know, one of the biggest things that we're, we're seeing during this holiday season is there's a lot more costs that small business owners are seeing. And, and I would argue that this holiday season is even more complex than mm. previous years. And 53 of small business owners that we surveyed in a, a recent holiday study said costs are going up for them. And it's really coming from a few places. Their marketing costs are going up because they really want to stand out these days. And there's a lot of noise and clutter out there. It's costing more for their employees, hiring employees, retaining employees, and even offering some holiday bonuses. Mm. The last thing that we're seeing is small businesses are worried about their supply chain. And so they're stocking up early. Um, and they're diversifying their suppliers. So all of that is leading them to look at cash flow management solutions. 60% said, I'm looking at, I want to make sure that I have the adequate capital this season. So the great news is uh, Cabbage from American Express is a great option. We currently have a, a digital line of credit product up to $250,000 that we're giving small business owners. And if you apply now, you can get a $250 cash credit if you are Great. And that's right now going through February. And that really is in recognition of the holiday season and in recognition of a, a recent holiday that we're one of the founding partners of Shop Small, which was the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Wonderful, Brett. These, this is music to my ears, to my startup ears. Um, I know myself navigating different things that I've been doing. You know, qualifying when you're first starting, what does it look like for someone to, to qualify for your program? And, you know, if they maybe don't have a line of credit, business line of credit, or maybe they just got a business account, what, what are the steps they need to take to qualify? Yeah. So that it, it, it's, it's a great, that's, it's really important for small business owners. And what we'd say is we've created an all digital application, right? So you can complete this in less than 10 minutes or less. We're looking at some of your personal information. We're looking at some of your business information and we're really looking to hopefully give you that, that growth potential you need. So we'll, we'll, we'll give you a line of credit somewhere between 2000 and as I said, $250,000 based on your background. And what's so exciting about this product is you get, you have a line, you don't have to pay any for anything for it. It's waiting there when you need it. Mm. And really what we offer is a lot of flexibility with this, that you can take a a six month, a 12 month, an 18 month loan under this line. So maybe you have you know, a short term need, something broke at the store, so you need to fix it now. Or maybe you have a little bit of a longer term need that you wanna create new signage, you're opening a second location, maybe you want a 12 or 18 month loan. Really, we're putting the flexibility in your hands. Beautiful. Now, I'll give you a little bit of uh, feedback here, especially in the entertainment space. Uh, a lot of times people are starting projects like myself with the pandemic project and the documentary I've been doing. Oftentimes you're finding you do need that. You know, maybe something happened on the road and you need to change your flight and you don't want to take that cash out of the business account. Um, how can startups that say maybe they're under 100,000, they don't have a traditional banking situation. I know a lot of um, entrepreneurs in my 
my business, they get sponsorships or capital through the digital area of Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, and they need to move that into the traditional banking. How do you speak to that market? I know a lot of banks want to see it under a traditional banking umbrella. Um, what do you see for, see for for that genre, would you say? Yeah. You know, one, one thing that, that we think is an important option that people should think about is your traditional credit card or charge card, right? And that's something that, that American Express has had for a number of years. And I, and I think that is an opportunity that a lot of my friends in the startup space is saying, make sure I have a, a credit card or a charge card with a appropriate line. And that may be the first thing that you use. And I think the great thing is, as you build a relationship with maybe an institution like American Express, and we see, you know, how you're growing and, and how well you're doing, you know, we're going to, over time, increase your limit. So as you get a big project or there's an opportunity coming down the pike, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. Wonderful. This sounds great. Um, so how can people find you? Is there any special code or any special um, access to, to get straight to you and get the funds for these startups? Yeah, I, I would say the first thing to look for is um, you can look up uh, Cabbage, Cabbage Line of Credit. Um, you know, and, and, and you'll find that 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 offer that we talked about. I think the other thing that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about right now for th this audience is American Express also has partnered with TikTok in something called the Shop Small Ex Accelerator. And this, that is 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 part of Small Business Saturday, which is a tremendous holiday that sits the, the Saturday after Thanksgiving between, you know, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and really is a day that we should focus on the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And your small business owners spent about $18 billion on that day. And 70 and, and consumers spent with small business on that day. And the consumers that we talked to said this really, you know, uh, motivated them to continue to shop with small business owners over the course of the holiday season. And one of the things we're really seeing as a need from our community is that, you know, online sales is becoming a bigger portion of their total holiday season and specifically social media spending. And so we really partnered with TikTok because we want to help small business owners attract Gen Z population and that millennial population. And so we have on the AmericanExpress.com backslash shop small accelerator, we have tools and tips from the creator community on how can you make your brand stand out in this time? How can you use hashtags and music and trends really to stand out right now? And we're offering a hundred dollar advertising credit for TikTok as well. Beautiful. What a way to just get a shot in the arm for the marketing. And you're really speaking to what is trending and I think you're ahead of the game because Amex is, if you look anywhere in the world, Amex is a trusted brand and it is it been around forever. And anywhere you go around the globe, you feel like you're being taken care of with Amex. So way to way to address that. And it takes a little bit, it shaves a little bit off on your marketing because TikTok is 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 the way to market these days. Yeah. And 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 as you know, you know, some of the stats we see is 46% of, of Gen Z has shopped on TikTok. 42% of millennials have shopped on TikTok. And those rates are only going up. And, and you may not be as familiar as a small business owner with some of those tools. So mm -hmm. let's help you get, get the education and the tutorial you need, because we don't really want you to miss out on these, on these attractive populations for your products. Do you foresee anything, this is just kind of a random question, but I'm in the airport very often. Do you foresee any partnerships in the lounges for small businesses as they travel, um, you know, to network maybe with the TikTok day or anything, any, any bonuses there in the uh, airport lounges? Yeah, I, I probably can't speak to anything coming. Okay, I thought I'd try. <laughs> I, I, I though am, am, am grateful that you're using the lounges. I think they're a wonderful asset, you know, of, of many of our American Express cards as well. Yes, yes. Well, we're excited. And what anything else in 2023 that you're excited about for Amex and startups? I think you're going to continue this as you launch it. Um, anything else we should keep our eyes open for with Amex? The other thing I will say, which which Amex recently launched, is we launched a high yield business checking account for small business owners. And that's so, exciting. 
And so now from American Express, you can get a business checking account that offers a 1.3% APY, wow. no monthly fees. And it comes, you know, it's, it's an all digital business checking account. And it comes with the, the brand security and trust that you would expect from American Express. We're really excited about that. And we'll be continuing to promote that heavily in 2023. Well, I'll be joining your checking account program. Uh, so be on the lookout for me because I'll definitely be doing that for my film arm. And uh, great to see your smiley face, Brett. And and thank you so much for um, bringing this to, to my to my viewers and listeners. I think that you're going to see some people attracted to this. No, thank, thanks so much. And, you know, there's many options out there for, for digital cash flow management solutions these days. Go research them and explore them. And I know it'll lead to a merry holiday season for all your listeners. I love it. And give us your um, handles or I think it's you said the backslash was. Why don't you give that to us one more time? Sure. AmericanExpress.com backslash shop small accelerator. That is our TikTok tools. Please check it out. I think it'll be really helpful for everyone. I'm going to join. I'm going to follow your page today. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. And um, happy holidays. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. See you soon. All right, you guys, that was Brett. So get your Amex on, you guys. They're giving, I think, $250 if you sign up for lines of credit starting, I believe, at 1000 to 250000 So take um, take a little pressure off yourself monthly um, and revolve that and build business credit. I think if once you um, file for your EIN, your entity identification number, which is like your business's social security number, once you open that checking account, um, you know, you can get a line of credit and uh, look on that. I think that that's going to take a little shave, a little off for your marketing. If you're doing it through TikTok and Amex, what a smart uh, branding marriage that was with Brett. So very cool. So we're going to shift gears here a little bit. Uh, we're going to bring Johnny on. Um, Johnny, how's it going? Hey, right. hey, hey Johnny, how's it going? I had a pause radio head. I was, uh, oh, you're jamming out, huh? <laughs> a bit. All right, you guys. So if you didn't see Johnny, I think you were on what, like four months ago, Johnny? Or Johnny was on earlier this year, and we're shifting gears. We're covering a lot of different startups. Johnny is in the uh, documentary um, film startup space, like myself. Um, you know, he's got many different. He's got his hands in many different pots, but he's here to speak specifically about. Justice for Demetrius. So Johnny, introduce yourself and your project, please. Okay, yeah, um, John Chorus, Johnny Chorus. Um, my dad's John Chorus, so it's hard to differentiate us. You know, if you like type in John Chorus, he's, he pops up everywhere. So um, I was called Johnny as a little kid and uh, can go by that now as well, like with my close friends, and I consider you one of those. Um, but um, yeah, we started this, uh, production company called Saturday Sun Productions to talk about uh, my captain, uh, my freshman year at uh, Notre Dame, a, a gentleman named Demetrius Dubose, who is this beautiful, bright, shining light of a human being, uh, was our leader, was an all-American, and uh, couldn't in NFL for four years. And he was just a- uh, One second, Johnny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're having a little static here. Are you? Uh, go ahead and mute, mute your mic for a minute and then unmute it. And let's see if that works. All right, Johnny um, is just giving us an intro here. All right, want to go ahead and start again, Johnny. All right. So, um, uh, okay, hold on. Okay, we're going to hold. We got a little static here. Guys, while Johnny does that, if you're not following me on Instagram, give me a follow um, at the startup with Monique Laray. And spelling of my name is right below here. Um, also, you can get on. Cap Aquarius Media has got a lot of my events and, and film updates there. And then let's see if Johnny will be back now. All right, how's that? Are we good? No, it's, no, it's this weird okay. little static. Okay. Thing. I'm going to switch over to something else. And we'll okay. just give him a second. I'll be right back. Okay, he'll be right back. Okay, guys. So um, in the meantime, I want to give you guys an update. We're doing a private screening on Sundance Week. If you want to see the Pandemic Project documentary, the first 30 minutes, we're going to show the film. It's, the trailer has won now nine awards. Shout out to the Palm Springs International Film Festival. Thank you so much for uh, making us a semifinalist and and having us be part of your film festival. It's a huge honor as a first time filmmaker. Um, so thank you for that. And um, we'll know pretty soon about Tribeca and uh, we'll keep you posted as we move along. And 
I will be dropping the trailer for the international version, the second film, the pandemic film, uh, really soon. It was supposed to come out in the summer, uh, pumping these things out, guys, and traveling and managing other businesses has been a challenge. So just bear with me. It's, it's coming. Um, what else? I feel like I should give you guys an update. All right. Johnny's back. Okay. Okay, that's better. Okay, cool. <laughs> Don't move anything, sorry Johnny. About that, Mo. Do not be sorry. We're technical, you know. So go ahead. You were saying your best friend. You're starting off to intro. Oh, so you know he wasn't my best friend. I, he's kind of like my best friend now, um, yeah. because. Uh, but anyway, I'll tell you about Demetrius Dubose. So we started a production company called Saturday Sun Productions uh, to honor our fallen captain at Notre Dame, uh, Demetrius Dubose. Uh, Demetrius was our captain in 1992, and he's an All-American and went on to play in the NFL for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for four years. Uh, he is an adventurous spirit, almost a mythological figure in many ways, an adventurer, uh, kind, big-hearted gentleman. And um, he was murdered by the San Diego police on July 24th, 1999. Uh, he was shot 13 times. And um, his story just evaporated from the consciousness. Um, but before he, before it, his story evaporated, they really um, did a number in eroding his humanity. And uh, like so many other victims of racial injustice, they reconstructed the narrative around his death to make it seem like he was a drug addled maniac who was attacking the police. Mm. Um, and I do wanna say, um, Demetrius did have his struggles um like we so many of us after we're done playing sports and i think you know um it's a harrowing lonely experience once the crowd stops roaring and it's hard to find your place in the world so demetrius was he was searching for that he was trying to be a pro beach volleyball at the time of his death volleyball player at the time of his death and um you know it's just it's a it's a great American tragedy, his story. Yeah. And I'm dedicating my life to telling it. Um, yeah. So, you know, we started Saturday Sun Productions uh, around the time that Michael Brown's murder in Ferguson. And I started just researching all of the stuff that happened to Demetrius. Um, his, the DA investigative report is, you know, I, I found it on the internet and I read it and I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Um, you know, the, there are two civilian witnesses, both say he was walking away and was shot in the back and that the police continued to hold guns over his head as he laid on Mission Boulevard dying. Huh. And all of the other witnesses were either off-duty police officers or members of uh, the San Diego military community. And um, they were able to just reconstruct this narrative and the media, even our teammates, every, everyone just swallowed it and then let it go. But um, kind of through my own struggles and heartbreak, uh, I was able to start researching and developing this story. And uh, the first thing I did was reach out to Demetrius's family and get their permission. So, Wow. And, you know, we cover a lot of different startups. This one feels, you know, I mean, all of them are personal. This one is a matter of life and death. A lot of brands start from an, an, a need in the market. There is a need in the market to tell these stories and to find justice for the family and for Demetrius and for the community. So, you know, startups can start in all different ways. And the, your dedication and, you know, being who you are and, and how you show up in the world, having heroes like you tell, you know, these, um, these people, persons of color stories, you know, it helps move the conversation because, you know, listen, let's be honest, you don't have to do this. You know, your life is pretty good, right? I mean, you, you're not going to have to really worry about getting shot by the police. Let's have that conversation. Well, you know, Mo, um, right? first of all, I'm, I'm far from a hero. Um, I think he froze, guys. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that, but that's what it is with technical stuff. Um, he's going to come back. That's Johnny Corse speaking about uh, Justice for Demetrius. It's talking about launching a documentary film business um, just from a, 
a passionate place and from wanting to give his family justice. So Johnny will be back with us. And um, I think you can follow them, Justice for Demetrius, on Instagram and um, and check out the backstory on that. And yeah, that's not far from where I'm at. You know, San Diego in 99, you know, it still happens, even though we're pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good out here. It still happens in the West. It's not just a Southern thing. It happens all, all around America. Um, so hopefully we can get um, him back on the line so he can share um, his vision for the film. But I know that they've made some um, some progress this year. And um, I believe there is a YouTube uh, link that you guys can see a sizzle of this, his project. Just type in Justice for Demetrius on YouTube. And while you're at it, check out my sizzle reel for Justice for Jackie. All right. Justice, the number four, Jackie. Um Hopefully we can get Johnny back. Uh, if not, we can definitely have him come back again. Okay, here he okay. is, Johnny. I'm sure All right, we're gonna beat this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry about that, Mo. No uh, problem. Where, where we left off, um, you know, you referred to me as a hero, and I just want to clarify something. You know, um, I I've been beset uh, by some of the same struggles that Demetrius had. So I've struggled struggled with addiction. I've struggled with depression um I've, I've struggled with a huge gaping hole in my heart and tried to replace it with everything you could imagine drugs alcohol rock and roll women and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger the more i tried and demetrius never had a chance to turn his life around completely he, he was on the verge of doing that mm. uh and during his untimely death but you know this quote unquote startup uh, Saturday Sun Productions. I mean, let me tell you, um, it's been eight years, and without the help of John Quinn, our editor and videographer, who's he spent eight hundred hours editing this. Wow. Um, yeah, it's it's insane. And without Claudia Kennedy, who was Demetrius's roommate in San Diego, who loved him dearly and like does so much behind the scenes to, to make this happen. And I, I would be really um, remiss if I didn't mention Sanaya Benson as well, who's who's our mutual, really dear friend. And, you know, Sanaya lost her son, uh, Christopher, a.k.a. Chipmunk, a week ago. Yes. And I look and I and I think. You know, there, there's just such a fine line between life and death. It's a miracle to even be here for me. And a lot of the reason I'm here is because of the color of my skin. Let's not get it twisted. Um, I have had my encounters and gotten away. Yeah, that's I've the conversation that we have to have. And I think your film and being who you are is creating that dialogue. I wanna see this film make it all the way. I think we're kind of running parallel together with our projects and our passion for them. You've been doing yours a lot longer. Your, you and your team, Claudia, and your editor, what was his name? John Quinn. John Quinn have been doing this and Sanaya. So when you do get on the red carpet and you do get your film in the film festivals, what's the takeaway for people? Uh, what do you want them to know about the film? What's well, the message? The, the message is, is about the frailty of our human existence and what it means. It's, it, Demetrius is an all American story. He, he's a, he's a gentleman who came from, uh, working class background. He comes from a, a family that really got together around him. And he was the golden child of that family. And there are other people, though, that were great athletes in his family. But Demetrius had it all. He graduated from Notre Dame in three and a half years with two degrees. Wow. He was brilliant. And he was unique. What I want people to take away, though, and I really, this is a this is a film as much for the people that we played with and the people who played in the NFL and people of color. It's it's for the children, um, because what 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 the children are facing right now in our world, they are going to have to be stronger than all of our generations combined. Ooh. And Demetrius's story is a, is a warning, a tale of warning of how fragile this existence is. If this could happen to Demetrius DuBose, mm. who is the captain of the Notre Dame football team, who was an All-American, who was a second round NFL draft pick, 
It wow. could happen to anyone. So it's it's for the fathers and the mothers and the sons and the daughters. It's a reminder to hug your children tightly mm. and remind them of this fragile existence that's called humanity. Yeah. And Demetrius is our modern day Emmett Till. Wow. He was interviewed by a professor of African-American studies at Ohio State, and he compared Demetrius' story to Emmett Till's story. Demetrius' story is totally forgotten. And when the film is shown, and when the pictures of Demetrius' bullet-riddled body are seen, people will have no doubt. And the one beautiful thing that's happening right now in my life because of Demetrius DuBose is I have a, a huge community of people that I never knew before that loved Demetrius. We have this common love for this man. Mm. But recently, the gentleman who called the police on Demetrius, who discovered him in his apartment, is connected. He's found me through oh. uh, the reporter from the San Diego Union Tribune and the Los Angeles Times. He found me, and we talk on a weekly basis. And he has been haunted. His name is Charles Flynn. He mm. actually had to move to London to get away from this madness. But for 23 years, he has been haunted by this. Wow. And once his story is told about what really happened that day, and once uh, Rita Yonker, once people know her version of events, these are the civilians. They had no stake in this game. And Charles mm. called the police on Demetrius. Once once they hear what really happened, it's, it's going to be shocking, I can tell you that. Wow. And I want to use this story, though, rather than people setting the theater on fire with anger. I want people to be able to give pause. And it's my dream to take the profits of this film and to put it into the community with the Demetrius DuBose Memorial Foundation and to get members of law enforcement and people of color in the same room, seeing mm. each other as human beings and starting to have open dialogue about what it means to be black in America, what it means to be a cop in America. Mm. I mean, the only way any of this will ever change just a little bit is if we start seeing the humanity within one another. And Demetrius is the one story that I know can do that. Yeah. And that's why like when I talk about him and Michael Husted, who is his best friend, who was the kicker on the Buccaneers, he and I have become really good friends over, over this. Um, you know, he told me he signed off when they said Demo forever. And Demo is Demetrius' nickname. And, you know, that is the dream, that the school children will know the name of Demetrius DuBose, just like they know the names of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and uh, Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin. Emmett and Jacqueline Stokes. Sawyers, justice for Jackie as well. Jacqueline Sawyers as well. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I think that this is this is really, really something that, it's kind of one of those things like if you don't address it, it's just going to keep happening. And there's a really important documentary that I think everyone that's in this conversation should see. It's called uh, it's called Who We Are and it's on Netflix and it's in a professor and he is um, also a lawyer and he's giving a um, he's giving a talk. But he lays it out for you in legal terms and he shows you the evidence, how we how we started, how we got to where we are and what we need to do to de-escalate and diffuse. And the Puyallup tribe of Indians, shout out to the Puyallup tribe of Indians in Tacoma, Washington, with, which was Jacqueline Sawyer's Indian tribe. Um, they put together 940, which was the first de-escalate initiative and it passed. And now California has adopted it, adopted it. So it gives training and techniques to help cops de-escalate. So, you know, we have to get more things moving to train people and show them how to police us because we pay the bills. We, the people are asking you to police us, but you have to do it in a, in a humane way because we want them to go home to their families and be whole as well. So I think that your work is going to, to push that forward. We're not going to let his name stop. We're not going to forget him here at the startup with Monique LeRae. We're going to keep talking about this and we're gonna push you for updates. I wanna know when you're gonna submit the trailer to the film festivals. Can you give us a timeline? I'm gonna push you a little, Johnny. <laughs> Do we have an update on that? Oh, we're having technical issues, guys. Oh, I hate that. 
All right. Well, um, that was Johnny Kors. Justice for Demetrius. We're going to talk more about it. But yes, if you are looking to start a small business, a small business around film and production documentary, Johnny's someone that you could speak to. I'm someone that you could speak to. If you have an idea, if you have a story, if you have a passion project, just start. You don't have to know the whole way. Johnny, we need a timeline. When are you going to submit the trailer? When can we see you moving about the film festival space? Well, we can. Um, I don't know when we'll submit the trailer. Um, right now, we are finalizing the assembly edit. We have over 50 minutes slotted right now. Um, so John is, uh, you know, like like myself, John has a full-time job in right. addition to doing this, right? right. And, and, you know, we chip away at it like uh, like Shawshank Redemption when <laughs> it's trying to break out. You know, that's how we're making this, one little bit at a time. Yeah. Uh, but what we're going to do um, before the end of the year um, is we're going to either A, have our own 501c3 that started in Demetrius's name, or we are going to um, join hands with the DuBose family, who it really, I consider them like my second family. Um, I talked to Jackie, Demetrius's mom, on a weekly basis. Um, his first cousin, Jerry Jordan, um, is, you know, he calls me his nephew, and I, I love his whole family. Chrissy Thomas, his aunt, uh, who is the matriarch of the family. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So I, I would like to align with them and I would Great. like to raise the remaining money in order to pay John what he needs in order to make this his top one priority and really expedite the process. Once that happens, I see it, you know, around Thanksgiving time next year, I want everyone in the world to be able to see this movie. But the vision right now is to um, be in Seattle and have a private screening sometime um, in the late summer, early fall of next year and then right. we'll go from um each month we'll go to a, or each week after seattle we will go to tampa where he played we'll go to south bend where he played we'll go to san diego where he died and wow. then then whether it's a streaming service um and it's a docu-series or whether it's on the festival circuit we'll go from there but i want his family to be the first people to see that and his seattle family to be the first people to see this um, and then we'll go from there, but it's coming along. It's, it's beautiful, but I do want to get Charles Flynn, the man that called the police to be a part of it. So there's another interview now that we have to add that we didn't anticipate having, um, but beyond That's gonna that, be a beautiful piece for the story going to be so yeah. important. Um, so it sounds like you need some capital to finish it and you're taking, you're being thoughtful, you're going with the family and you're going with the flow of the story. So I'm going to hold you to it. Summertime, before summertime, we're going to have you back here. I'm going to push you a little bit because yeah. I want to see you, you know, hit hit the bricks with this. And is there a GoFundMe or is there a an arm where people can uh, show their love financially to help support? Thank you for that, Mo. Yes. If yes. um if you go to our website Saturday Sun Productions and that's Sun Saturday Sun Productions. All right, we're getting stuck here, but um, SaturdaySunProductions.com. You guys, you can show your love there for Christmas if you have some write-offs you need to do. It's a beautiful story that's going to be told. We're gonna make it happen. Thank you, Johnny, for coming on. Thank you, everyone that was on the show. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but that's our life right now, right? That's what we do here. We'll have him back on. And um, Johnny, thank <laughs> you so much. That's all right. Give the give the website one more time, Johnny. Saturday, SaturdaySunProductions.com. There is a donate tab on Saturday Sun Productions. That's Saturday, S-U-N Productions.com. Well, it's good to see you smiling. Keep up the good work. And I know that you're going to get an angel investor. I know you're going to get this done. Shout out to the family. Happy holidays. Happy and holidays. Um, thank you for the work you do. You are a hero, whether or not you know it, um, for you. making this um, something that you're, you're focusing on. Thank you for what you're doing. Well, thank you for having me on, Mo. And thanks for everything that you do, too. Oh. Um, especially telling <laughs> Jackie's story like you have. it. You had a beautiful documentary. And if we could make ours any to any level close to yours, it'll be a huge success. So thank you so much. Well, you inspire me and you're welcome. And we're running, we're running parallel with each other, friends. So it's gonna right get done. Okay. Lots of love to his family and to yours. And we're gonna check up with you soon, okay? Sounds great. Thanks, Mo. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. All right, you guys, that's it for the show. Um, see you guys next Sunday. I have um 
I have a good show next Sunday. It's going to be a good one. So as always, and I ask you this every week, what will you start up today? We'll see you next weekend. Bye, guys. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae only on L.A. Talk Radio.